What's up, everybody? It's Other Jesus, and I'm back a little early this week with the Destiny Weekly update. Trying to get it done a bit early because Bungie gave a kick ass Twitch reveal on some of the new features of the Taken King. And today I wanted to give you guys my opinion on it and go over what I think are the highlights of the broadcast. The entire broadcast was an hour long, so of course I'm not going to make this video an hour long, but I highly encourage you guys to go watch it if you got some time to spare but beware there are some spoilers so you might want to wait if you want to be fully surprised come September 15th and real quick speaking of September 15th I'm going to be doing a 24 hour twitch stream of the Taken King and I'll be giving you guys the exact details the start time as we approach that date all the good stuff so I'm real excited for that hopefully I can make it 24 hours is pretty crazy but I'm looking to you know pick up some more twitch followers and I love streaming live so let's see how it goes but let's get down to business and go over the major details of the twitch reveal today First off, the light level. So we pretty much know now how the light level works. The light level is an average of all your equipped items, weapons, armor, ghost shell, bands, capes, whatever. And it appears that everything has light level, right? Or rather, nothing has an exact light level. It seems to be tied into the damage of your weapon and the strength of your armor. So I guess this is pretty cool. It seems to be a bit more effective because previously, unless you got a particular piece of armor to drop, you'd have to wait another whole week to level up your character with no guarantee due to the randomness of the game. So now basically you just use the highest level gear you have. And in other good news, it appears that you can what they call infuse weapons and armor. So what this allows you to do is take that lower level armor or weapon and upgrade it to a higher level. Here is how it works. So let's say I find a chess piece that I really like, but it's only a level 38. As I progress, if I find a level 39 chest piece, I can do what Bungie's calling infusion, which basically means I can absorb the level 39 chest piece into my preferred level 38 piece, thus leveling up my level 38 and allowing me to gain more light level and you know from that piece that fits my style and build. The same thing applies with weapons, so it sounds kind of confusing, but it's pretty cool, and I think it's actually just kind of going to be pretty basic once you get in there and start playing with it. Speaking of weapons, Bungie is recalibrating the weapon damage system. Essentially, the weapons we currently have, the value is dropping by over half. However, Bungie said that the actual damage that the weapon does is not changing, just the face value, just the numeric value. So I think they are doing this to bring everything in line for the future and to have the light level average make more sense and be easier to understand. Exotic weapons are changing in a major way. It appears that we are not going to be able to take all exotics with us to year two, only some, which I don't know if I like that, but sure, you can use the old exotics if you want, but only some exotics will have a new year two variant or be able to reach the maximum value of year two, so I find that pretty interesting and odd. Not sure how, if I like that too much. I mean, why some but not all? However, now there is a terminal for exotics called the Exotic Blueprints, which gives you information about each exotic. And if there is a newer, more powerful version of the exotic for year two, you will have access to it right away with some exotic shards and some uh, small amount of glimmer. Also, the exotic perk that makes the exotic special will be unlocked right away so you can kind of test it out and see if you like it. And as you level up the weapon, other perks will open up and it appears that some of the perks will be switchable, kind of like how now we can switch between different scopes on snipers or, you know, high caliber rounds versus faster reload, that, you know, things like that. So, for example, I saw the new Soros regime. You can switch between rates of fire pretty cool stuff so if you know your Soros regime you know that's a pretty cool little perk you can switch between a slow rate of fire while scoped in or a faster rate of fire while scoped in so ooh, should be pretty cool currencies and reputations have been simplified basically you pledge allegiance to a faction once per week you can only change it once per week 
and that does increase your rep with that faction, but you don't have to wear a warlock band or a cloak or you know whatever it is the titans wear. Uh, you can wear other types of bands or cloaks, and now these have their own special perks and values assigned. And there is no longer crucible or vanguard marks, it's just called legendary marks. And that's what, that's what you use to buy everything. It was odd that it's still capped out at 200, because even though you cap out, as soon as you spend marks, you can just start gaining marks again right away. And there is no limit on how many marks you can earn per week, which was a major error of Vanilla Destiny. So I guess they're just doing this to encourage you to keep playing and also keep buying some stuff so you can't just keep saving up and saving up and saving up and waiting to see what they sell at a later time. I don't know, I just thought it was weird that it still capped out at 200. And then the gunsmith is useful for something else besides just fusion rifles and re-rolls of perks. But if you haven't heard about that already, I'm gonna leave that as a surprise for you guys. But let's just say the gunsmith is someone you're going to be visiting a lot more. And that Cryptarch character, it looks like he's got legendary engrams now, and they have a small chance of turning into an exotic. Not turning into a blue or a green, but an exotic. So you're going to get something good or something better. Um, so that that's I was kind of surprised about that. Very surprised. So love to hear what you guys think about that, but pretty cool. And let's finish up with the vault space, which Bungie doubled. They made a big deal about this. They saved it to the end. And you can have 72 weapons now saved in your vault. And I guess that's okay. It's a step in the right direction. I know, you know, 72 is a lot of weapons to hang on to, right? But this game has a lot of weapons. It has a lot of loot. And it seems to be just kind of like a band-aid, like a yearly buffer. You know, because if it's only doubled, and if I ran out of vault space in year one, wouldn't you think that I would also run out of vault space in year two if you only doubled it? I was expecting a little bit more like what they have done with the exotics and the shaders where you can go to a terminal and view all the shaders you've gotten and see the ones you haven't and how to access them. I would have liked to have seen something where I could at least, you know, see all of my year one weapons, even the ones that I dismantled, kind of like a rest in peace this weapon that I dismantled even if you can't get that weapon anymore I don't know just something just something like that even if you couldn't upgrade them or use them I mean at its root this game is about collecting grinding and collecting grinding and collecting and as it stands right now it seems like Bungie is relying on us to dismantle stuff that we think we might not want or get around to using or miss because they never had a system in place from the get-go to allow for the vest, a vast amount of weapons and armor that we would want to collect over this 10-year lifespan of Destiny. Overall, however, it finally appears that we have a fully functioning and carefully thought-out game ready for its second year. Now, I won't go as far to say that year one was just a beta, but it's clear that what we played during year one wasn't prepared to function for 10 years. I mean, we saw that with you know, every little update, you know, I'm, I'm pleased, you know, with every little DLC, I mean, you know, they change so many things in such weird ways with every DLC, so I'm hoping they don't do that again this year, but I'm pleased with what I saw today on the Twitch stream, and I give Bungie major props for listening to all of the feedback and making necessary adjustments to Destiny. I'm excited, and I'm ready to see what secrets and surprises Year 2 has in store for all the Guardians out there. And well, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and if you made it this far into the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, or just leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Twitch stream in Destiny Year 2. And if you made it, you know, this far in the video, and if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button, because apparently that helps more people find the video. It's like magic. So until next week, Guardians, this is Other Jesus. I'm out, and sleep well.